Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks all for being here. Today, the Department of Justice has dealt a significant blow to the crypto crime ecosystem. Justice Department agents and prosecutors working in partnership with the Treasury Department and French law enforcement have disrupted BitsLotto, a China-based cryptocurrency exchange notorious for laundering criminal proceeds from the dark net. And last night, agents of the FBI arrested Bitslato's founder, Anatoly Legodimov. I am joined today by the Assistant Attorney General for the Criminal Division, Kenneth Polite, the United States Attorney for the Eastern District of New York, Brian Peace, FBI Associate Deputy Director, Brian Turner, and the Deputy Secretary of the Treasury, Wally Adiemo. Today's law enforcement actions put all of those who seek to exploit the cryptocurrency ecosystem on notice that the Department of Justice will use every tool working along with our partners, every tool that we have to attack the criminal use of the dark net and cryptocurrency. And we are taking steps to address the crisis of confidence in the cryptocurrency markets, where criminals and fraudsters seek to operate beyond the reach of law enforcement. Malicious actors working from what they think are safe havens are exploiting crypto markets and flouting the laws and the regulations that guard the integrity of our financial system and along with it, the earnings and investments of law-abiding Americans. It's no secret that cyber criminals rely on these bad actors to launder their criminal proceeds from cryptocurrency into fiat currency. But today, thanks to a coordinated international effort, Justice Department prosecutors and agents have disrupted a busy corner of this criminal ecosystem. Last night in Miami, FBI agents arrested Legodimov, a Russian national and the founder and majority owner of Bitslato, a Hong Kong registered cryptocurrency exchange. The charges allege that he operated Bitslato as a high tech financial hub, as he put it, that catered to, quote, known crooks. Bitslato failed to implement safeguards required by US law, safeguards that enable law enforcement to detect and to investigate financial crimes. Instead, Bitslato facilitated the transmission of hundreds of millions of dollars in illicit funds, fueling darknet marketplaces, and laundering the proceeds of ransomware attacks. For example, as alleged, Bitslato was a crucial financial resource for the notorious Hydra Darknet market, the disruption of which I announced from this podium last April, at that time with our German partners. Now, Hydra was the world's longest running and largest darknet marketplace, responsible for 80% of the world's darknet transactions. Together, Hydra and Bitslato formed a high-tech axis of crypto crime. Hydra buyers funded illicit purchases of illegal drugs, stolen financial information, and hacking tools from crypto accounts hosted at Bitslato. And sellers of these illegal goods and services at Hydra sent criminal proceeds to accounts at Bitslato, all to the tune of over $700 million in direct and indirect transfers between 2018 and 2022. Now, I've said before that we would go after the entire ecosystem that allows cyber criminals and illicit actors to flourish. Today's action against Bitslato as with the disruption of Hydra, reflects another critical step in executing on that strategy. 
At the time of Legodimov's arrest and continuing into the early hours that this morning, the department's international and domestic partners engaged in a coordinated campaign of disruption. That campaign includes law enforcement actions in multiple European countries, the seizure of Bitlato's servers, and enforcement actions by the Treasury Department here in the United States. These actions show not only the broad scope of the defendant's alleged crimes, but also the international net dropped by law enforcement to stop him and his business partners. With these actions, today marks the end of the Hydra Bitslato crypto crime axis. We've also busted the business model of the cyber criminals that Bitslato supported. And coordinated operations like these against Bitslato, using all tools and designed for maximum impact, are the linchpins of international success against cybercrime. Our actions also mark the most significant enforcement effort against a cryptocurrency exchange by the National Cryptocurrency Enforcement Team, launched last year following a comprehensive cyber review led by my office. To all of those exploiting the cryptocurrency ecosystem to enable crypto crime, we have a clear message. We will not only target hackers, fraudsters, and criminals that mask their profits in cryptocurrency. We are also unleashing the full force of the Department of Justice on the illicit actors and entities that support cyber criminals like Legodimov and Bitslato. Operating offshore or moving your servers out of the continental US will not shield you. And whether you break our laws from China or Europe or abuse our financial system from a tropical island, you can expect to answer for your crimes inside a United States courtroom. I want to thank the agents, analysts, and prosecutors who worked diligently to investigate this case. And finally, a tremendous thanks to our foreign partners and the Treasury Department for their collaboration in this and other cryptocurrency and cybercrime cases. And now let me turn the podium over to Assistant Attorney General Polite. Thank you, Deputy Attorney General Monaco. When the department announced the creation of the National Cryptocurrency Enforcement Team in late 2021, we set forth the blueprint on how INSET would work to disrupt criminal abuse of the cryptocurrency ecosystem. We named Un Young Choi, an accomplished leader on cyber and cryptocurrency issues, and a seasoned department prosecutor to be INSET's first director. We said that INSET would investigate those who enable the use of digital assets to facilitate crime, with a particular focus on virtual currency exchanges and services. And we said that INSET would enhance the department's collaboration with domestic and foreign partners in aggressively investigating and prosecuting crimes involving cryptocurrency. Today's actions against Bizlato, the first public enforcement action led by INSET, are precisely what we had in mind. As the Deputy Attorney General described, Bizlato is a cryptocurrency exchange that allegedly facilitated illicit activities by making it easier for bad actors, including ransomware groups and dark web drug pushers, to conceal their identities and profit from their misconduct. Bitslato accomplished this in part by flouting key requirements of anti-money laundering programs and helping criminals hide their transactions behind the anonymity of the blockchain. But today, Bitslato's co-founder and senior executive is in handcuffs here in the United States. And agencies around the world have taken strong action to ensure that Bitslato can no longer facilitate crime. None of this would have been possible without strong partnerships on the domestic and international levels, 
between the INSET, other parts of the criminal division, the U.S. Attorney's Office in the Eastern District of New York, and the stellar teams of FBI agents. Between U.S. law enforcement and our counterparts in France, and between the department and our colleagues at FinCEN. The department also drew heavily today on its deep bench of international experts, including our new Cyber Operations International Liaison and our legal attache in Paris. The work announced here today is a textbook case for what we can accomplish when INSET works with its partners here and abroad to disrupt the harm caused by criminal cryptocurrency platforms. And we are just getting started. I now turn the podium over to my colleague, U.S. Attorney Brian Peace. Thank you, Assistant Attorney General Polite. Uh, I'm Brian Peace, United States Attorney for the Eastern District of New York, and I'm honored to speak today about the work of the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Eastern District of New York, NSET, FBI, and all of our other partners, what we've done with respect to investigating and prosecuting Anatoly Legodimov. Today, my office unsealed charges against Legodimov for operating Bitslato, as you've heard, a cryptocurrency exchange whose stock in trade was that it allowed users to open accounts with minimal identifying information. The result was that Bitslato became a safe haven for criminals, including drug dealers and ransomware groups. They knew that when the police traced their funds to Bitslato, Bitslato would not be able to turn over its users' true identities. The defendant, who is Bitslato's majority shareholder and sat atop of its organizational chart, knew full well about these violations. Bitslato's executives communicated on their encrypted chat system about the proliferation of drug dealers on their exchange and the way that their policy of collecting no identifying information had brought on a flood of, in their words, quote, dirty money, end quote. Bitslato conducted its business in a brazenly lawless manner that is directly at odds with the rules of honesty and integrity that must govern the financial marketplace. To anyone who still believes that they can hide from the law by using cryptocurrency, this prosecution should put that illusion to rest. Although this was a global crime, its effects reverberated in the Eastern District of New York. Bitslato did business with individuals residing in our district. It accepted connections from computers in our district, and the defendant was continuing to administer his company from the moment he stepped off a plane at John F. Kennedy Airport in Queens, New York, last October. In my office, the Eastern District of New York is at the forefront of cryptocurrency prosecutions, and this case continues a string of recent prosecutions in this space. Just two weeks ago, we charged a developer of NFTs with defrauding his customers in a rug pool scheme. And last month, we charged four individuals located in the United States and Canada with sending tens of thousands of dollars worth of cryptocurrency to aid ISIS. And alongside our partners in law enforcement, we are committed to carrying out the most sophisticated and technically demanding prosecutions at a pace that matches the tempo of the criminals we pursue. Our partnership with the National Cryptocurrency Enforcement Team enhances our work in this space, and we look forward to our continued collaboration. And finally, I want to commend from my office Assistant United States Attorney Alexander Minlin, who is detailed to INSET, and Assistant United States Attorney Artie McConnell, along with INSET trial attorney Scott Meisler and Matthew Blackwood for their excellent work on this case. I'll now turn the podium over to FBI Associate Deputy Director Brian Turner. Thank you, Brian. I am pleased to represent the FBI here today 
as part of this announcement of the arrest of Anatoly Legodimov. The arrest that is the culmination of more than a year of hard work by our men and women in the New York office and also across the United States and overseas. Legodimov is a Russian national living in China who was arrested in Miami for the crimes he committed in the United States by operating an unlawful cryptocurrency exchange register in Hong Kong. He probably thought his cyber criminal enterprise and the dirty digital money that cycled through it were outside the reach of the U.S. government. But he and his bizlato cryptocurrency exchange were not operating with impunity. Neither was the illicit Hydra Darknet marketplace in which Bislato exchanged over $700 million, as the Deputy Attorney General mentioned a moment ago. We shut down and locked the door on Hydra last April. Both of these actions were made possible because of the FBI's strong relationships with our law enforcement partners around the world. Over the course of our global investigation into Bislato, we found that more than $15 million of the ransomware proceeds have been laundered through the exchange, making the platform a clear enabler for ransomware actors. Unfortunately for the defendant and Bislato, one thing that the FBI understands is how to take down cyber criminal organizations. And our overall strategy to combat cyber crime involves going after all key parts of that criminal ecosystem mentioned by the Deputy Attorney General, the actors, their finances, and the supporting infrastructure. When you combine this arrest with the French authorities' uh, dismantlement of Bislato's uh, e uh, financial uh, uh, infrastructure, digital infrastructure, and the actions taken by the Treasury Department that will be spoken about in just a minute, I'd say we did exactly just that. I can tell you by the folks that I'm standing up here with that we are committed to taking a whole of government approach to the fight against financial crime and cyber crime, a fight to protect our country, its citizens, and our national security. So let this be a reminder to the cyber criminals around the world. No matter where you are, no matter how much you twist and turn to cover your tracks, there is a risk and there will be consequences. I'd like now to introduce Deputy Treasury Secretary Wally Ademo for some additional remarks. Let me start out by thanking the Deputy Attorney General for her leadership on this set of issues and for the work that is being done here at the Department of Justice, and to thank our colleagues at the Department of, D of Justice for being such great partners, not just on this um, action, but on going after this ecosystem more broadly. I think that um, in addition to thanking um, our colleagues here, I want to thank the talented men and women of FinCEN for using a new set of authorities that Congress you gave us to go after illicit financial action in Russia so quickly and to do it so effectively. One of the things that those people in this ecosystem count on, those who are cyber criminals that work globally, is that they will be able to escape prosecution in the United States or in any other jurisdiction because of a lack of coordination. What today's action actually proves is that is not the case. Working closely with French authorities, we've taken an action here that should demonstrate to cyber criminals around the world that we will work in a global, consolidated fashion to take action against them to protect our citizens and to protect the global financial system. Uh, today, as part of the U.S. government's action um, against the virtual currency exchange Baslato, Treasury's Financial Crimes Enforcement Network has taken steps that expose and disrupt Russian crim cyber criminals and their enablers. FinCEN is officially identifying Bitslato as a primary mo money laundering concern in connection with Russia's illicit finance. Bitslato has repeatedly facilitated transactions for Russian affiliated ransomware groups, including Conti, a ransomware as a service group that has links to the Russian government and to Russian connected darknet markets. Two thirds of Bitslato's top counterparties are associated with darknet markets or scams and Bitslato received virtual currency worth almost half a billion dollars from illicit activity between 2019 and 2021. Nearly 50 percent of all known Bitslato transactions during this time involved Russian illicit finance or otherwise risky sources. Bitslato is particularly active in facilitating illicit activity, but it is ultimately part of a larger, larger ecosystem of cyber criminals that are allowed to operate with impunity within Russia. 
It is well known that Russia is a haven of cyber criminals, where the government often enlists them for its own malicious purposes. The majority of ransomware incidents reported to FinCEN in the second half of 2021, for example, were conducted by Russia-related cyber ransomware actors. At a time when Russia is waging a brutal and unjustified war in Ukraine, and as it seeks to circumvent sanctions and governance controls to fill its coffers and sustain its violence, we will not tolerate criminals enterprises that enrich Russia's malicious interests. Because of significant operations in and connection to Russia and Russian illicit finance, Bitslato threatens U.S. national security, the integrity of the U.S. and international financial sector, and business and institutions worldwide. Identifying Bitslato as a primary money laundering concern effectively renders the exchange an international pariah. It imposes special measures on covered financial institutions, prohibiting them from transmitting funds to or from Bitslato or from any account or wallet administered by or on behalf of Bitslato. Treasury's actions today sends a clear message that we are prepared to take action against any financial institution, including virtual asset service providers with lax controls against money laundering, terrorist financing, or other illicit finance. And we will not hesitate to expose and hold accountable virtual asset service providers, dark net markets, or anyone else facilitating cyber criminals um, using this new authority or other authorities within the Treasury Department. And we look forward to doing this in, in coordination and collaboration with our colleagues here at the Department of Justice. Thank you. Um, CNBC, Eamon, why don't you take us off? Yeah, thank you. Uh, two questions, if I could. I mean, the first one is, uh, Legadimov is a Russian national who lived in China, was operating there. What was he doing in Miami, which obviously puts him at risk of being picked up by the FBI? Uh, and the second question I have is, uh, what are you learning so far about Pizzolatto's customer base, who was using this exchange, and are you seeing any overlap between the other big exchange, which is in the news lately, which is FTX? So I'll start off um, on your first question. Um, you know, don't really have anything more to say about um, Mr. Legadimov's activities in Miami, other than the fact that uh, in the early morning hours he was arrested by agents of the FBI, and um, we're going to take it from there. Uh, and can you repeat your second question? Second question: What are you learning about the customer base of Bitslato? You know, who is using that service? I think Wally and the emails talked about that a little bit a second mm -hmm. ago and whether you're seeing any overlap between that customer base and the customer base at FTX, which obviously is in the news right now. Well, I'll start and see if um, either um, uh, Kenneth or uh, the U.S. Attorney want to um, make any additional comments. I'm not going to speak to um, the ongoing um, uh, investigation and matter um, regarding FTX, but as alleged in the court papers unsealed uh, today and as referenced by the U.S. Attorney, um, Bitslato was uh, being used by a host of cyber criminals uh, to form, as I uh, noted, this high-tech access of crypto crime used to launder uh, funds, used to buy and sell um, and host the wallets of those buying and selling uh, illicit goods. But let me see if either the Assistant Attorney General or the U.S. Attorney want to add. Uh, just to second the comments from our Deputy Attorney General, I would simply note that the defendant here has been charged in a criminal complaint. Uh, there is always a possibility that additional charges may follow, and in particular, our investigative efforts continue both here and abroad. All right. Uh, Katie, Wall Street Journal. Hi there. Um, this question is for the deputy. These, que these questions are for the deputy attorney general. Um, I'm wondering what message these coordinated actions should send to the broader crypto markets and if there is any sort of geopolitical significance to the fact that he was living in China uh, um, but was a Russian national. And also, while we have you up here, I am hoping that you might say whether you anticipate your specials, specials council investigations will be wrapped up by the end of the year when the midterm election cycle is in full swing. Well, on your second question, uh, I've got no predictions to make and nothing to add uh, to what the Attorney General announced last week. And on your first question, uh, I think what today's actions really show is, one, um, we will work in a coordinated and a collaborative fashion uh, with partners here in the United States and, more broadly, all around the globe to root out those who seek to exploit the cryptocurrency markets, those who seek to find safe haven 
um, in countries, whether they're Russia, whether they're China, whether they're places in Europe, and that there is no place that is beyond the reach of U.S. law enforcement and our partners. Uh, Raffi from Reuters, one of our friends from Treasury. Thank you so much. Uh, did you find any link between Bitslato and Russia's conflict in Ukraine? And did Russian actors use Bitslato to circumvent sanctions imposed as a result of the conflict in Ukraine? So as my colleagues have said, our investigation continues. And what we do know is that Russia has set up an ecosystem that is permissive for cyber criminals and for the ecosystem that allows them to finance those crimes. Our goal is to ensure that Russia can't use cryptocurrency or other means to circumvent our sanctions. That is part of why we use this new authority to go after Bitslato, to make clear that now they're an international pariah. And our message to um, those actors who want to use crypto to try and circumvent our sanctions in Russia or in any other jurisdiction in which we put in Sanction, put in place sanctions is that we will, in, col in collaboration and coordination with our allies and partners and with the Department of Justice, find you, go after you, and take actions against you using the tools at our disposal. Um, the uh, amount of crypto sent to illicit actors reached an all-time high in 2022. Um, to what degree do you deem these transactions, first of all, as a national security for a threat for the U.S., specifically when it comes to crypto, but also uh, expanding on the potential sanctions evasion more broadly and, and beyond Russia as well, to what extent these uh, transactions should be deemed as a threat to the general efficacy of uh, U.S. sanctions? Well, I'll start um, and then turn it over to um, the Deputy Secretary. Um, look, I think uh, what we have shown in these actions, as well as the takedown of the Hydra Darknet marketplace, uh, is that um, those who are seeking to exploit the cryptocurrency markets by ignoring or flouting the regulations that are put in place and the laws that are put in place to give consumers, to give investors confidence in our markets uh, to give them confidence in our financial system, we will root that out. We will go after um, and use whatever tool it takes to find those who are seeking to hide in the shadows um, and who seek to try and exploit the anonymity that they think uh, the blockchain provides, the anonymity that they think this technology provides. And what our efforts have shown um, is that that's not the case. Um, and. Uh, those activities, whether it's laundering the proceeds of ransomware attacks, certainly do uh, pose a security concern. And that's why we will be unrelenting in our efforts and we will uh, continue to take a, a coordinated approach, an international and global approach uh, to this challenge. I don't know if, Wally, if you want to add. Just a um, word. Um, and I, I agree completely with the Deputy Attorney General. What I will say is that um, there are those who try to use any new technology to try and cr um, commit crimes. Um, and here, cyber criminals are attempting to use new technology when it comes to virtual assets. And our message to them and our message to the industry is that we, we expect them to follow the same rules of the road that are followed by other financial institutions and intermediaries, and that that ecosystem is a place where we will not permit illicit finance to go on. The action today should be seen by that industry and by actors there who seek to try and evade our sanctions or to violate laws or to, in some ways, impact our national security as a tool that we will use in the future when it comes to Russia and illicit finance. But as I said earlier, we have other tools that we're prepared to use as well because um, our view is that virtual currencies, the traditional financial system, should not be used to transmit and illicit finance, and we're prepared to act to make sure that that is the case. Uh, one last question, Alex Mallon, ABC. So if convicted, I saw that this defendant faces a max of five years in prison with the scale of wrongdoing that you kind of all, have all outlined, what do you say to people who would kind of say that the punishment here doesn't seem to fit the crime, and then for the deputy, the White House has been saying uh, since the, the news of the, these classified documents were found broke that they hadn't been more forthcoming because of their cooperation with the Justice Department. To be clear, has the Justice Department at any time since November told the White House that they cannot discuss the facts of this case? So 
on your second question, I'm not going to comment on anything beyond what the Attorney General has said uh, last week in announcing the appointment of the special counsel uh, and what he has said more broadly, uh, which is that we don't talk about our investigations uh, in a public forum. And for your first question, I'll turn it over to the U.S. Attorney. Sure. So to, to be clear, this is, in our view, a serious crime, um, which we are taking very seriously. Um, the outcome of the case is premature to, to anticipate that, and it's important to note that the investigation is ongoing. So there could be, as the Assistant Attorney General said, additional charges down the line. Experts here for folks that have um, on topic questions, um, and I think that's going to do it for us today. Thank you very much. Deputy Attorney General, can you speak to the Republicans who say Thank that you you're much. being unfair to the former president? Thank you.